As promised, I'm going to show you more about how to work on the booms. Uh, we started just channeling these up and putting some colours in them, um, but I want to actually align them into uh, the boom positions and then get them into some sort of format where I can edit them and focus them. Uh, and it's quite fiddly and it's, it's not really something that needed a, a lesson uh, as part of the project. You have, I've already shown you all the tools you need, but I wanted to show you my process because I find this, this quite a difficult part of drawing a plan uh, and it's very easy to get confused. So hopefully just understanding how I draw up booms will, will help you when you need to do it. Lesson 27, we're going to look at how to work in uh, on booms. Uh, drawing up booms, it's a, a bit fiddly. Um, the first thing I'll point out is that we haven't yet covered how you would put a light on the floor. So I just want to quickly show you that. If you go to the truss uh, tab in your, in your library, which you can also access from up here, uh, we had a look at this earlier, we can still see the, the truss piece that we were looking at then, which is uh, a light structures truss. If you go back to the root, like that, uh, and type in floater. Yes, I know, don't giggle. Uh, a floater is something that sits on the floor. Um, we can pop this anywhere and it allows you to place a fixture in space. Uh, as I said to you in a previous lesson, every fixture needs to be assigned to a mounting position. It cannot just hang in the air. Um, although, something I have discovered recently is that there is an option to hang something on the floor when you're inserting it. Uh, it's a new feature, I haven't played with it yet, but this is my method. I put in a floater because you can name that floater. You can then have a, uh, a hang structure label which is useful when you're um, trying to analyze your data later on, you're trying to find something, or you want to layer something so it's easy to turn it on and off. So there you go, that's a floater, important to know that. I don't have anything on the floor in this show, it's all on bars, so I'm just gonna jump straight into this. Now what I do, I've, you can see I've got a boom here, that's the position of it, but I don't actually need that physical structure as part of my boom. The base plate will just be on the floor, be flat, it's not gonna inter interfere with anything. Uh, what I need to do instead is I need to take all of these bars and move them into the space it's going to eventually sit in. It doesn't matter that they're facing this way, it doesn't matter which way they're facing, as long as the lights are facing the right way at the end. Um, you know, I happen to have my booms going this way anyway because it doesn't interrupt the uh, uh, the actors coming on off stage. You know, we're not leaving them much space there between the booms to get on. Um, but the first thing I do is, you notice here I've put in my CAD plan I put down all the heights that I want my booms to be at. Uh, it's fairly consistent across all my booms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the ones at 0.5 and change the height of them now. Because it's easy to do now while they're all separated. Aha, uh -huh. right, caught myself out there. That one's at 1.5, not 0.5. There's a reason for that, it's going up the uh, the side of the, the stairs. Ooh, doesn't matter if I capture the text, but I don't want it. And one more. I'm not going to do all of these. I'm just going to make sure I do one properly. So now I've got those selected, I can right click, go to properties, pipe, and I can say that's 0.5. And going back to that lesson where I was looking at trusses, this is another reason why truss can be a bit, a bit of a fiddle, because you don't have that option for trusses to be able to go right click properties and move it. Um, so I'm just going to stick to this side for now actually, because it could take a long time. You don't need to see me doing all my work, you just want to see how I do it, and then you can do it yourselves. One meter. I'm going to do these ones. Oh, get rid of that. 1.5. So let's try and find a nice little blank space that you can you can get to. And then at 1.5, this one starts. This one's actually hung on a ladder, so it wasn't a boom. It was uh, suspended from our catwalk. So now it's come up blank because it's actually already got things at different heights. So when it when it detects different heights, different length bars, it just leaves it blank. So we're telling you, you may have already got data in there um, that you're editing. Oh, so I've done that one. That one's also 1.5. They're sitting next to each other side by side. We actually got these really nice um, uh, the, 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 the truss systems that has a uh, like a space inside that you can hang your lights in so no one can knock into the lights. It's quite a big high for this show for one of my smaller productions. So usually I get to light a show, I don't often get to light shows, but when I do I have a tiny, tiny budget. Two point 
2.5, so oh, we're all getting bored of this now, so I'm going to finish this soon. There we go. So it's everything that's 2.5 metres high. I've recently worked on a, a couple of musicals with, with Ben Cracknell, the lighting designer, and we did uh, in the last year, Grease the musical, um, and uh, we're working on uh, Joseph and the Santa Claus Dreamcoat, and there's another one we're working on, I can't remember what now. And uh, he's got a very sym symmetrical style of uh, of work, where his his booms are always very very similar uh, across all his productions. All lighting designers, they have a style, don't they? Um, and I can almost look at his plan and, and know how he wants me to focus his booms because <laughs> he has his system. Um, and he uses a lot of side light in his production. So I always uh, always expect to have to spend a long time doing booms. So this has been a well, a well honed process on one of his shows. So now that I've got all my lights at the right height, I'm now going to move them over the top of each other. So what I'm going to do is, is bring them in, but I'm just going to leave a very, very slight gap so that I could get to them and change them if I need to. Now it's not very, um, it's not very good for accuracy because I'm leaving a few millimeters gap in my in my booms. As long as I can get to an edge, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if those on top of each other, as long as I can get to one. Um, now people might roll their eyes at this and go, well, that's not very good. It's not very accurate. You know, everything's not quite on top of each other. It does look a bit messy. But the point is, is I can select my booms. I can actually see the order they go in. You know, so I know that the top one, if I need to select it, it's the top one here. If it's the bottom one, it's the bottom, you know, the bottom one. So that is worth sacrificing a few millimeters of accuracy on the light because it won't be that accurate on stage anyway and it means that i can quickly edit something and that would save the time for the designer when they're on stage that's well worth the uh, the effort now i can move all these together and select all my lights uh, if i left drag left to right i can select all those lights in one go go to properties uh fixtures and I'm going to spin them all by 90 degrees. But which way is it going to go? Is it going to go left or right? It's gone the wrong way. We're going to go the other way. Minus 90 or 270. Doesn't really make a difference. Minus 90. There you go. Uh, and as you can see, when I select all those fixtures, there's a, there's a range of them. They're actually all listed here uh, and grouped by fixtures. So if I select the CE Source 4 Juniors, I'll only be editing the Source 4s. If I select the Pattern 743s will only be affecting the pattern 743s. You can't select each individual light. So if I had five pattern 743s, I couldn't see all five of them. But you can edit them by group, which is kind of useful because they might have different, you know, different lens options and things which you can you can fiddle with. So I'll click OK. Um, I'm not going to do the others because the whole point here is I'm just trying to demonstrate a point. Uh, just bear in mind that if I had done all the others, they'd all be sitting in the same place. So if I looked at it in the front view, they'd all be in a line. If I looked them in the side view, you would also have a set over here. So there's always going to be, in all three view, views that you can look in, a light on top of another one, um, which is why we need the isometrics view. Now, something else you could do here, it, you, know, you may be thinking, you could have patched all of these and channeled them all up while they're still distributed like this. Well, yes, of course, we definitely can. Two reasons, though, why I'm demonstrating it this way. First is that if I don't have a cab plan and I think laid out like this neatly, I would have built them on top of each other in the first place. I would have built um, six bars, put them at different heights, and added all the lights in straight away, uh, rather than moving them. It's just, for me, it takes less time because, because of what comes next, because of my process. Um, so if I jump over to isometrics view, oh, and where's it gone? Where's my plan? Is it hiding? Ooh. Ah, right over there. Looks really, really small. There we go. There's all my lights, nice metrics views. It's a CAD view. I can't spin it like I can with the shader view. If I hold down my left mouse button, it doesn't let me spin. It lets me select. Um, and you can see all my light settings sort of relatively off the floor. As I said, I like to leave things about one meter off the floor. I don't think they all are, but it gives you the idea. And there you can see my boom looking a little bit messy. Uh, part of the reason for this actually is that these two fixtures, there's two fixtures there, they should be separated from each other. So already I proved why I separate these. And in fact, I was going to give you a second reason why I do patch them like this, um, or why I'm demonstrating you patch like this. The second reason, sorry I didn't tell you, is because you may need to come back to edit it later. <laughs> so um, even if you've patched them perfectly and laid them on top of each other, 
you still need to know how to get to those fixtures later should you need to um, just like I've, I've had to do now I've had to get into to move these and just perfectly demonstrated why I keep those bars all slightly separate because sometimes you do need to go back uh, okay so now let's go back into our metrics view so now we can see those two fixtures side by side I could have selected and dragged them in here you see this is this is a new feature the working plane so I can choose to work in my X and Y directions that means I move things around on that plane um, control Z to undo that I could select my working plane section which means it will move it up and down and I've got all four on so it'll only go up and down and again from the front so it doesn't change the view which changes the direction that you're working in it's quite cool um, but when you're working in isometrics mode because you can't just navigate around by rotating and clicking and dragging you have to hold down control and use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move and it moves in increments I think I showed you this in an earlier lesson so there is a view that you can get to where you can see all of the lights on your booms and I can clearly see and select that one this one this one and this one and I'm not saying it's perfect there are times when you know you have such a crowded set of booms and there'd be proscenium booms next to each other and there were ladders on top of that um, they will all be clustered but in this view you can eventually move around to get into the position where you can select something and if you're in a place where something is overlapping such as this um, if you hold down shift as you're selecting it will cycle so not shift yep shift it will cycle between the selections see that one or two two or two by holding down shift but it doesn't tell you what you're selecting it's easy with lights because you can see the beam move and a little dot at the top to notice which one you got selected um, so that's how I work on isometrics view I can then go to my quick tools like I did before I'm just gonna make this up because I don't know what we're really up to but Add the colour, but we've already done colour, haven't we, for the booms? So I'm just going to click and select. Oh, added my intensity, channel, patch, channel, patch, channel, patch. There we go. So they're probably completely the wrong channels. I've probably doubled up now. But yeah, you can see how easy that was. So that's how, that's the process I'd apply to all of my booms. I'd do that across all of them. It's the most time consuming part of modelling a, a lighting plan for me in WYSIWYG. You know, the, the overheads take very little time at all. But when I see a plan of lots of booms, I have to remember to charge a bit extra. Well, I just consider how many days it's going to take me uh, in my, in my, to do my work. I think that you know the, the booms are probably four times as much time and effort per light as it is to do the overheads. Um, so that's that's definitely a consideration for me when I look at look at a plan before costing it up. So I'm going to leave it there. That's uh, just useful for you to know. Uh, and in the next section, we're going to look at how we can use uh, the custom Gobo and colour uh, wheels uh, which is useful for loading into scrollers, moving lights and I'm also going to show you the custom Gobo wizard so it might be a slightly longer lesson because there's a few different things to cover there.